I did so many burpees. 3,000 to be exact. And it was fun. It's a movement all about falling down and getting back up. It's physiologically impossible to do burpees and, and remain tired. <laughs> 10 burpees, small prescription. 2,995. You will not be tired for at least a half an hour. 2,996? Yeah. But when you do 100... 2,997. They become very fucking hard. 2,998. So funny how whatever number you have in your head is where you start to... <laughs> right? 2,999. You know, it's a real mental thing. 3,000. <sighs> Hell yeah. I just did 3,000 burpees in 30 days. Oh, why the hell did I do that? Come on, Mabel. We're done here. Oh, hey! You throw a bucket of water on a rock and it doesn't do anything. You let a drop of water fall into a rock every day, it creates a hole in that rock. You gotta ask yourself, do I want a rock with a hole in it or not? The goal is not to get sore. The goal is to show up every day, less intensity, more consistency, more growth cycles. So here's a fun fact to start things off. When I started the challenge, I didn't even know what a proper burpee was. And a lot of you CrossFitters are going to be upset, but here is a proper burpee. No push-up, no jump, just a plank and a stand. So just to clear things up before I get started, during this challenge I'm doing the CrossFit burpee and not the original burpee. And you're just going to have to trust me on saying that I did the 100 burpees. I did film a lot of them, but it's kind of boring to watch, so I took some notes along the way, and here are my top five takeaways. But first, let's note a pretty drastic change in body composition. Now, the photos might be flawed because I took the first photo before a burpee session and the last photo after the final burpee session. And also in the first photo, I was highly inflamed from spending a week being a crazy lunatic in Nashville. Totally worth it. The crazy thing about the pictures though is the change in posture. Just look at that. Would you just look at it? Just chilling out here. 140s, 150s, taking it easy. Takeaway number one, RPE versus DOMS. For real, my muscles did not get sore after seven days. On days three, four, and five, I noted feeling a little sore in different parts of my body. So I addressed the way that I was doing the burpee, what kind of effort I was putting into each part. I mean, it seems like a small movement, but when you get into it and really look at it, would you just look at that? And you do it a hundred times, a little flaw in your form is gonna add up a lot. I'll also note here that after I addressed my form, my resting state became normal. I did feel a little more animated than usual though. I mean, I had been spending my workouts in the gym for a long time, and when you're doing some sort of big movement like this that incorporates your whole body and gets you off the floor, you just walk around feeling more confident than if you were just doing an isolated, you know, curl. Takeaway two, repetition. When you do the same thing in nearly the same way every day, you realize how those little lifestyle factors affect your performance in profound ways. There were days that I had coffee before I did them, days that I didn't. There were days that I was out late with my friends, and those were the worst days. I take that back. I actually think I had a mild form of food poisoning one day, and getting up and doing the burpees the next morning was horrendous. And not only does your lifestyle affect your performance, but it also affects your resting heart rate. You see, here's my resting heart rate for the month of the burpees. All those spikes correlate almost perfectly with getting off and on track with my lifestyle. Oh, and while we're at it, let's look at Nashville, living it up on that last day. I just can't imagine if I was partying like that all the time, what my resting heart rate would seem like. Jeez, that would be crazy. Takeaway three, you can't get obsessed with the numbers. I had to confront my uh, OCD tendencies with this, you know. I was using the Fitbit as like a primary player in this uh, 100 burpee challenge. 
But on day six, my Fitbit randomly broke. I think it was water damage. And on day seven, I almost didn't do 100 burpees. I thought, man, the tracking is, is off. I'm not I'm gonna have bad data. What's gonna happen with this challenge? But really, I just had to show up and do it. And Fitbit actually sent me a new one. I, all I had to do was call them. They sent me one in under a week. It was amazing. But the thing is, don't be too obsessed with the numbers. It's not about the numbers. It's, it's how you feel is the, the biggest concern. And while we're speaking of numbers, along the way I found this really handy app called Counter that allows you to just keep track of things that you're doing. So I did every 10 burpees would be one and then 20 burpees would be two. Takeaway four, you make time for what is truly important to you. Now, I had a little bit of a schedule with the burpees. I'd wake up, take my dog out, pipe down some coffee, and then go do 100 before taking a cold shower and going to work. Mark Twain said, eat a live frog first thing in the morning and nothing worse will happen to you the rest of the day. Now, I don't think he was actually eating frogs, but I'm not sure, but for me, getting up and hitting the mat, doing those 100 burpees was kind of like eating a frog. But there were days when that got thrown off. I went to go visit my family. They have a garage. Perfectly capable of doing burpees in. How many do you do today, Chase? 100. There were even days when I just slept in. We all have days like that. So I didn't do them in the morning. Um, so on my lunch break, I would just run down to the gym and bust them out real quick. It doesn't take that much time. You could do this on your lunch break. Which brings me to takeaway number five. People don't get it. Hit high intensity interval training. Very effective if done properly. Let's get after hit. <laughs> People at the gym would see me doing these 100 burpees and they'd be like, wow, that's crazy. I can't believe you're doing that. And then they'd hop on the treadmill for an hour and I had been in and out in 15 minutes. It's that, you know, carb fueled, calorie burning cardio craze of the late 20th century people are still riding on. I think there's a lot of research out there to prove that that's not the only way or even the most effective way. So much rhetoric around exercise has been promoted by the mainstream media, funded by large corporations. They want you to exercise more, consume more, fuel yourself more, buy more gym equipment, eat more of those energy bars that are actually loaded with more sugar than a freaking Coke. I'm gonna stop there and I'm just gonna say, do less with intention. You know, how did you learn about the exercise routine you have? Did you pick it up from somebody that looks and feels the way you wanna look and feel? If not, you might wanna reassess what you're doing. I did so many burpees. After a while, it just kind of became a meditation. After a while, I stopped listening to music. I just showed up and it was just me and my breath and the burpees and the movement and this internal mantra that appeared that just said, fall down, get back up, fall down, get back up. Perhaps I am an expert at finding too much meaning in the mundane, which I know is true. But also perhaps there's something inexplainably profound about this metaphor of a movement. It's just this crazy process of falling down and getting back up. Don't go do 3,000 burpees, but the next time you fall down, get back up. Burpees, Mabel.